Well, hey guys, Adrienne here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a face mask. So there's a great pattern. Um, it's a PDF over at thedeaconess.com, and that's been floating around. It's something that the CDC has approved if you are making uh, handmade masks. Now, the cloth masks are not as good as the disposables, just as a, as a note, but it's also better than nothing. And because there's such a shortage, we have a lot of hospitals that are asking for them. So this is the pattern I'm using. It's not my pattern, but I know some of you are visual learners. So we're going to get started here. I have cut uh, two rectangles of fabric. They are nine by six inches. And for those of you who aren't in the United States, that would be about 15 by 23 centimeters. So that's what we're going to start with. And uh, the pattern also calls for two elastics that are seven inches long, which would be 18 centimeters. So what you're going to need to do, this is very thin because I'm using jewelry cord. That's what I happen to have. And of course, as you all know, sometimes it's hard to get supplies right now. So it does say if you're using the thin cord to be sure to tie a knot in the end. Now I already have, I've already knotted my my cords but it's an overhand knot all you're going to do is wrap it around your fingers and poke it through and that's how you're going to do just just a regular knot so leave about a half inch tail uh, off the end so we're going to get started this is one of these sew and turn projects which i happen to love um, it is beginner friendly, but it's kind of confusing if you've never done it before so start out pointing your fabric uh, the right sides facing so, and we're going to start somewhere along the middle here, and that, that will be evident when we get to the end. I'll show you exactly why we've done that, but we're going to start at the middle here, and um, it doesn't say what the seam allowance is. I'm just using 3 eighths. That's kind of what I default to when I'm not sure, so I'm going to start with a 3 eighths. So once you get to the corner, uh, I like to leave my needle down, lift up the presser foot, and you're going to turn. Now this is where you're going to put your elastic in. So you're going to want to kind of open this up, put your elastic in. You're going to actually, this is going to seem weird because you're going to sew it inside, but that's okay. I promise. That's exactly how you're supposed to do it. So you just fit it in as closely as possible to that corner. Put your press, presser foot down. Try not to wrinkle your fabric. So you want to just get that in there. And when you do your elastic, sorry for the movement here. Uh, when you do the elastic, then you're going to want to back it up, and stitch in reverse, and then go forward again. And that is to make sure that these cords are very secure because obviously a mask is not going to stay on your face if it's not secure. So we're going to just keep on rolling here until we get to the next corner and then open it up. And from your same cord that you already started with, we're going to put that through so that it's sticking out on the edge here. And once again, go over it a couple of times. Got to apologize for the camera moving. It's mounted to the same table I'm working at. Now, when you continue, you want to make sure that your cord isn't getting stuck over here where you're about to sew. So just make sure it's all the way tucked in. Flatten everything out. And then we're going to race to the next end. Stop in at the corner, and here we are going to do the exact same thing. Okay, now to pick back up, we are going, we're approaching where we started here. This was our starting point. You can see the, the thread here. And I've got a pencil here, and this is just going to remind me to stop sewing. I'm going to go about, let's see, I don't know, two inches, five centimeters, give or take, um, and just draw a little line here, and that's going to remind me to stop. So as I stitch up here, and 
then I'm just going to quick back stitch. And this baby is ready to come out. So now we have basically a little pouch. And we have sewed everything inside. So we are going to just turn it inside out. You can also reach inside if that makes more sense to you. And pull out the corners. And then just keep on pulling until it's all the way right side out. Now I also have my pencil on hand if I need to kind of poke out those corners a little more. If I can't quite pull them. Okay, so we've skipped ahead to I've got it all straightened out and I've pinned my hole closed, so that's now closed. And we're gonna do the tucks that the uh, pattern mentions. So in this case, I'm just gonna fold this over like this and grab a pin and pin it in place. You're gonna wanna make three of them all facing the same direction. And then when you flip it over to the other side, you want to make sure that the same direction means that you are doing your tucks the opposite way. So that when you look at it, this fold doesn't, uh, it's not halfway, it's not like twisted halfway. So now that you've got all six tucks in place, it's looking a lot more like a mask, if you'll notice. And we are going to stitch all the way around the outside. And this is to reinforce it. So once we've passed that, oh, let's break a pin. <laughs> it's real life, you guys. So this is going to close up that hole that I had pinned shut. And when you get up to the corner, Show your needles in place before you turn it and I recommend leaving these pins in place um, because this corner it, with all of this fabric it can sometimes be hard to stitch through and these pins will help you to move it through if you don't break one like I said real life guys all right so then you just need to sew all the way around the outside and then all the way around the outside one more time. And that, once you take the pins out, that'll actually finish your mask. So now that we are nearing the end, or rather the beginning of where we started stitching around, that's my end, I'm just going to back stitch. And I am all done. Take out your pins and it's ready for wear. So these have been taking me about 15 minutes to make, um, start to finish. Uh, that's cutting, measuring, all that, all that fun stuff. So if you are scrap busting today, tomorrow, whenever, um, you can bust out a lot of these in a day um, or even in an hour. And by the way, if you're looking for more hour or less crafts, you are in the right place. Check out the archives because I've got lots and lots of uh, fun do-it-yourself stuff to do. So, um, one quick note about what the CDC has to say about the masks. Um, they are approved, but they're also not the first choice. The first choice is, of course, the disposable masks. But with the shortage going on, um, this helps. It's more for people who are already sick or who may already have germs or be a carrier and not know it. Because as you put it on and you want to get... A nice snug fit between your nose and your chin but as you put it on all of the uh, the saliva droplets um, your breath all of that kind of stuff it stays more in the mask if you sneeze it doesn't go everywhere it goes in your mask and make sure that once your mask gets damp for any reason you want to take it off because uh, it's like a sponge otherwise it doesn't do you any good if it's wet so you want to keep it dry as well so um, 
um, thank you so much for uh, tuning in and I hope you guys are all safe and healthy and I will see you again really soon.